3D printing is at the core of Elon Musk's ambitious plan. Buzz Aldrin, Bill Nye, and other luminaries of the scientific and astronautic world were in Mexico's second largest city, Guadalajara, to hear how the billionaire will accomplish this remarkable feat and build a city on Mars. A fleet of spaceships. Musk has plans for 1,000 spaceships that will wait in Earth's orbit and be ready to depart every 26 months, the time it takes for optimal planetary alignment to occur. Each spaceship will transport between 100 and 200 people at a cost, roughly equivalent to a price of a medium-sized house. Musk has priced the ticket to Mars on the assumption SpaceX can bring the current figure of $10 billion per person down to $190,000 per ton of payload. Elon Musk used the example of an airplane ticket to illustrate his point. If airfare were based on using a plane that was good for only a single trip, then it might cost $500,000, the price of a Boeing 737 shared by 180 passengers. Because airplanes can make multiple trips, this cost can be reduced to $43. The initial journey time of 80 days is a little longer than even the most circuitous journey by traditional means, but the cost is calculated in a similar way. Musk's target price of $140,000 per ton of payload this would include the passenger's luggage and food, plus necessary life support systems. Musk hopes that the promise of a zero-G games and pizza will keep passengers entertained. It's got to be fun and exciting so people want to go, he said. Could 3D printing also play a role in enlivening a potentially dull diet for the Mars colonists? Certainly, we have seen NASA exploring the idea, and BHEX has since commercialized some of the work around 3D printing with food. Given Musk's professional love of mariachi, this music might also feature as in-flight entertainment, an International Astronautical Congress, IAC, host in Guadalajara, is probably the best place to recruit interplanetary musicians, given that it is the birthplace of Musk's music of preference. By Musk's calculations, it may take between 40 and 100 years to establish a population of a million people on Mars. While the space travel system is composed of multiple reusable elements, these do have a finite life. The first leg of the journey to Mars involves liberating paying passengers from the firm grip of Earth's gravity. This will be accomplished with a rocket 3.5 times greater by payload capacity than the current record holder, the Saturn V. The 130,000 tons of thrust necessary to lift 550,000 kilograms comes from the Merlin rocket engine family, also developed by SpaceX. This allows the booster rocket to return to Earth and land once the upper spaceship containing passengers reaches orbit and detaches. Such an approach is advantageous, according to Musk, as it allows the spaceship to take on the required fuel for the next phase of the journey in orbit. Refueling will take place above the Earth, and huge carbon fiber tanks will be filled before the spaceship departs. Mining Mars for Fuel Selecting a suitable fuel required the appraisal of variables, including cost, ease of transfer, and the potential to produce the fuel on Mars. Deep cryomethalox was chosen over kerosene or a hydrogen-oxygen mix. This methane-based fuel can be produced with relative simplicity using the Sabatier reaction on the Red Planet. Powering the spaceship are 42 Raptor engines, arranged in two outer circles with a cluster of seven engines in the center. The outer engines are in a fixed position, while the central engines can move on a gimbal. Musk announced the successful testing of the Raptor, and has previously discussed how SpaceX uses 3D printing to manufacture their Draco engines. Made from titanium and Inconel, 3D printing allows SpaceX to significantly reduce the cost of fabrication. Integrating cooling channels in the walls of the rocket engine chamber can be created using 3D printing, a process that would be a real pain using traditional methods. Mars might be a great place to go, but Musk won't be among the first group of passengers. The probability of death is very high on the first mission, he explained. Mice, 3D printer, and other cargo. The SpaceX 4 mission to the ISS will carry aboard some unusual items. Dragon will remain berthed to the space station for about 30 days to allow astronauts to unload the new cargo and refill it with equipment to be returned to Earth. Among the novel cargo inside the morning's shipment is a NASA rodent habitat for biological research with an initial group of 20 tiny tenants. Astronauts quickly lose muscle and bone density during spaceflight. Scientists hope that studying the same phenomenon in mice will help them understand more about how the human body degrades during the long-term missions in space. Sometime before Dragon flies back to Earth, the robotic capsule will pop open its trunk so that the controllers on the ground can reach in and grab a new instrument called rapid scat. The scatterometer will measure the speed and direction of ocean winds on Earth once it is installed on the outside of the space station. Some of the cargo on board Dragon is booked for a round trip. A student-designed fruit fly experiment is slated to come back to Earth after 30 days. The researchers want to know how a group of mutant, stress-resistant fruit flies fares in microgravity and the 3D printer built by Made in Space will turn out a few initial test parts and send them back with Dragon. Researchers with the California-based Made in Space and it partners at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, want to learn as soon as possible how the quality of items printed in microgravity compares with the quality of parts made on Earth. 
Dragon will also return with a small crop of lettuce, harvested from NASA's VEG-01 experiment, nicknamed Veggie, which was first brought to the space station during SpaceX's last resupply mission in April. Scientists on the ground will analyze frozen lettuce samples to determine whether they're safe to eat. Though researchers probably won't take a nibble themselves, said Marshall Porterfield, director of NASA's Space Life and Physical Sciences Research and Applications Division. Relativity Space raises $650 million from Fidelity and others to build 3D printed SpaceX competitor. 3D printing specialist Relativity Space raised $650 million to step up work on a fully reusable rocket that will attempt to challenge Elon Musk's SpaceX in less than three years. The money will be used to accelerate some of the production ramp rate and get to a higher launch cadence as quickly as we can, because the demand is certainly there for it, Relativity Space CEO Tim Ellis told CNBC. Relativity's new capital will be focused on its Terran R rocket, a launch vehicle that would be similar in size and power to SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. Terran R will carry 20 times more to orbit than Relativity's Terran 1 rocket. The race, which Ellis described as War Chest Doubled, was led by Fidelity and comes eight months after Relativity bought $500 million in a round led by Tiger Global. The $650 million in equity added BlackRock, Centricus, Co2, and Soroban Capital as new Relativity investors. Relativity has now raised $1.34 billion in capital since its founding in 2015, with its valuation climbing to $4.2 billion from $2.3 billion in November. Its headcount has grown to 400 people, with Ellis saying the company plans to add several more hundred this year. We've signed up to create a lot of value, certainly remaining the second most highly valued space company in the world, Ellis said, as SpaceX commands an industry-leading $74 billion valuation. Relativity is building the first iteration of its Terran 1 rocket, and has manufactured 85% of the vehicle for the inaugural launch. It uses multiple 3D printers, all developed in-house, to build Terran 1, and will do the same for Terran R. The rockets are designed to be almost entirely 3D printed, an approach which Relativity says makes it less complex and faster to build or modify than traditional rockets. Additionally, Relativity says its simpler process will eventually be capable of turning raw material into a rocket on the launch pad in under 60 days. Ellis noted that Relativity received higher fundraising offers than the one it accepted from Fidelity, but went with the firm as the lead due to its prestige and reputation. Relativity is aiming to launch the first Terran R mission in 2024, from Cape Canaveral's LC-16 launch pad, where its first Terran 1 missions will also launch. While Relativity is nearly out of physical space, in the headquarters it moved into last summer, Ellis said the company has the core infrastructure in place needed to manufacturing Terran R. It has five large-scale 3D printers and five smaller development printers, and plans to add two more development bays in the near future. But Ellis noted that the company completed work on a new 3D printer head, which more than doubles its print speed. What do you think about Elon Musk's plans to build a 3D printer in space? Let us know in the comment section below.